Fabulous Fiber friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen and I am your host. Today is a beautiful, beautiful sunny day in Southern California. It is a Thursday, the 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. I want to wish all of you a very happy Valentine's Day. And my husband and I have no big plans. We, <laughs> our big plans are usually hanging out with the dog and watching some fabulous Netflix or Amazon or something. Uh, right now we're watching uh, Better Call Saul because the new season was just released, so we're into that. Anywho, I wanted to pop in today. I don't have, let's see, any, no completed projects. Well, that's not quite true. I do have one completed project, but it's just something I whipped up for stitches. And I am in the middle of a lot of things, but I wanted to pop in and say hi to you guys because Crochet Luna and I got together my favorite local yarn store, The Altered Stitch, in Valley Village near Sherman Oaks, California. And Claudia and I met there with Diana and we had a great time at the trunk show. Um, so I just wanted to share with you guys some of my goodies that I picked up there. Also, we're going to have a little knitting in the news, which I've been meaning to talk to you guys about forever. Many, many months I've had these articles. So we will talk about knitting in the news. I want to show you a test knit that I just completed. And I'll show you where I'm at with my works in progress. As I said, I am going to try to do more crocheting this year. And so I do have something on the hook and on the hook. Are you on the hook for that? <laughs> do you guys remember that expression? You're on the hook for that. Um, so I want to show you that shawl that I'm working on, the crochet shawl, which is now on hold on the hook because I want to try to finish my Sorel or maybe it's Sorrel. Oh my God, you guys, I'm such a Looney Tunes. Guess what, you guys? My husband finally started the paperwork for retirement. Now we're feeling like we want to be some kids and just throw caution to the wind and as crazy and foolish as it may be, we may just pack up one day and off we go. So we'll see. We're thinking, we're entertaining a lot of things. And as a friend of mine says, I love fantasizing about moving and then I never, we never do it. So who knows, we may end up staying here and I'll just make a lot of trips to New York as I have been lately. Let's get started. <gasps> Can you dig it? Look at this crochet crown. You guys know that I have other, I love to do my, you know, I'm always channeling Frida and I made other crochet crowns and then I would sew the flowers to a plastic headband and sometimes the little teeth of the headband would after a while they poke into my head and it gets annoying and the flowers are so heavy that if I move my head too much the headband wants to tip off so I thought for stitches I really want another flower headband so I crocheted a ton of flowers lots of flowers and some leaves and I just I set it all out and then uh, I crocheted like a headband for the base and then just sewed everything on and as I went along I thought oh I need to add more flowers so I did and then I would sew the flowers to up to the headband and to the flowers so it's a very very it's quite heavy anyway I just love it and so I'm going to wear this at stitches so here are So I crocheted those little, um, what do you call that part of the flower? I don't know what that part of the flower is called, but that little part of the flower. So what I did, I think I'll make a little video for you guys and I will try to insert it. I'll do it here. You know, make a slip knot. You know, you can chain 8, 10, 12, depending upon how large you want it. So here's, a, I chained 11, so I am going to just single crochet, then I just chain one, I turn, 
right, so I'm turning my work. I go into the very first stitch and slip stitch. The next stitch, slip stitch. And then I just slip stitch all the way across those stitches. I secure that. Take my tail. And I go to the end, right? Here you have the end. I slip this through to sort of cinch it. I roll it up. Right? So you just roll it up. And then I, I sew the ends together. Whoops. So I just sew the ends together a couple of times, and you may have to do this a few times, until you get a nice secure ball. And that's it. Here, can Is that focusing? So that's what I do. And then so that is my crochet <coughs> crown. I want to give you a close-up. I'm just so happy with how it turned out. Bella's on. I just love it. So I'm going to wear this at stitches. Uh, yeah, so that, so that is my latest crochet crown. And what I love is that it does fit right just on the head. And so when I turn and move, it's not going to go you know, it won't tip off or fall off or anything. So that is my only finished object for this week. Everybody and their brother and sister are making the Sorrel, Sorrel, I'm not sure which way it's pronounced, sweater by Wool and Pine. And, oh my God, you guys, this is such a fabulous, fabulous pattern. I made a boo-boo in the beginning. I wasn't paying attention to the directions, and so um, well, I guess I don't want to give too much away. So there was something about the positioning of something, and I wasn't really paying attention, and I watched the tutorial. Oh, and there are tutorials on how to do this stitch, this great stitch, the patterning for here. Uh, the tutorial's fabulous, but somehow I wasn't quite paying attention or something or somehow something was a little bit unclear so I made a mistake with that plus you're supposed to slip something as if to purl and it did not say with the yarn in front or the yarn in back and since I'm in the habit of slipping as if to purl with yarn in front for my edge stitches for garments I did that and during the first um, set of these of this patterning I thought gee that doesn't look right and I would look at the pad projects page and so I set up my uh, and I set up my Ravelry page so I'm looking at other people's Ravelry pages and I'm thinking okay something doesn't look right so I'm looking at the pattern again and I had put my project on Ravelry and um, Selena dank, dank fiber um, she, I guess she's monitoring all the Sorrel or Sorrel sweater makes. And so she wrote me and said, oh, I hope you don't mind, which of course I do not mind. I'm so happy she did it. She said, it looks like something, you're misunderstanding something in the pattern. Something doesn't look right. And, and she actually pointed out, oh, you're slipping as if to pearl with the yarn in front and it should be in back, which I should know this. If it doesn't tell me in front or in back when you're slipping as if to pearl, I should assume it's in back unless I'm told otherwise, but for some reason I had it in front and I'm slipping them. I thought, why is that crazy? Luckily, I only had to tank back maybe five rows 
which is a little pain because of the mohair, but not bad, uh, and, and corrected my mistake because I don't, well, the slipping as if to pearl with yarn in front was a huge mistake. And the other thing would have left my, my columns of this design, they would have been off center if I continued in the correct way. And I didn't want to do it in the wrong way because that would have thrown the whole pattern off. So I was very happy Selena reached out to me and did point out my error. And so I'm so, so happy that, I mean, talk about pattern support. She was right on top of it, checked it out, saw that I was making a mistake, and oh my gosh, I'm just, again, I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Selena. Not that you'll see this, but thank you so much because it really helped me like move forward. Here's where I'm at so far. I am using, in this project, I am using these two yarns. The mohair is by Hedgehog. It is Heruku, I think is the name of it. I'll put it below. And also, where's my little thing? Threadhead Knits Company. So the, uh, the fingering weight yarn is by Threadhead and it's called Royalty is the colorway. And there's another, oh, where is it? Oh, here, here. And so this is the other colorway I'm going to incorporate into, this is also Threadhead and this one is called Prom Queen. And so I'm going to incorporate that into the Sorel Sorrel sweater as well. And I'm thinking I have, I have a couple of mini skeins of a color that I'm, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out what colors I can, what other colors I can work into this sweater. I thought I was decided and now as I'm knitting, I'm not sure. So I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't know if I should go kind of crazy and throw in like a really wild, crazy color, but maybe it's too, we'll see. Um, so that is my progress and it is in my Atenti bag. So, knitting in the news. So, there was a woman, she would exchange secrets, and she would keep them in her knitting basket. In 1944, a 23-year-old British secret agent named Phyllis Latour Doyle parachuted into occupied Germany to gather intelligence on Nazi positions in preparation for D-Day. Doyle has recently celebrated her 98th birthday. She secretly relayed 135 coded messages to the British military before France's liberation in August. She took advantage of the fact that Nazi occupiers and their French collaborators were generally less suspicious of women using the knitting she carried as a way to hide her codes. For 70 years, Doyle Doyle's contributions to the war efforts were largely unheralded, but she was finally given her due in 2014. See, women are never recognized for their work and their contribution to, to this society, any society, to the world. Anyway, so in 2014, she was awarded France's highest honor, Chevalier Legion of Honor. She worked as a flight mechanic. Um, blah, blah. Anyway, they spotted, they thought... I guess they saw in her that she would be a great spy. So Doyle used a bicycle to tour the region, often under the guise of selling soap, and passed information to the British on Nazi positions using coded messages. In an interview with the New Zealand Army News magazine, she explained that she concealed her codes, always carrying her knitting, because my codes were on a piece of silk, and I had about 2,000 I could use. When I used a code, I would just pinprick it in pin prick it to indicate it had gone. I wrapped the piece of silk around a knitting needle and put that in a flat shoelace which I used to tie up my hair. So I mean that's amazing isn't it? Anyway so she was very influential in helping the Allies win World War II. Also in the news uh, Del Pitt Feldman, 90, designer, who made crocheting hip, 
Apparently she passed away. This article is from New York Times Obituaries, Sunday, February 2nd. So she just passed away. Anyway, in the 70s, this woman, Ms. Feldman, was like really into crochet. And so she made it really hip. Um, she was from Pennsylvania. I guess she lived in Pennsylvania most recently. Uh, but she was an artist and a fashion icon best known for creating hand crocheted garments with a breezy confident ease the tactile drape and raised texture of the material became key elements of such items designs uh, let's see her clothes are mostly sold at a studio that she opened on east 70th street in manhattan's east village the garments including open weave vests string bikinis mini dresses and capes seem to capture the free willing spirit of the neighborhood and of the 1960s counterculture her clientele included Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Grace Slick, and Andy Warhol. High-profile women like Cher and Lily Tomlin also wore her clothes. Isn't that cool? So crochet is hip. And so now we have Gregory Stitch and we have Louis Borgia. People are really, really getting back into crochet, which is so very cool. With the advent of indie dyed yarns and indie dyers, I think it's made a huge... I don't think. I know. I think everyone knows this that knitting and crochet has been just taken to a whole new level. And I think that, you know, I still have a few friends that say, oh, isn't that for old ladies? Aren't most of the people older women? And I say, oh my God, no. There's like 20 and 30 year olds who are artists and fashion. Uh, they have degrees in fashion and art, these young men and women. And, you know, they're very involved in, in the fiber arts. This is there is one of Del Pitt Feldman's designs. Here's another one. Here's another one. So that is knitting in the news for this week. Back to show and tell. I'm sure a lot of you watch Chevy Ralph and she mentioned that she is doing this shawl and I said, oh my God, that looks so familiar. And I went through all my patterns. I, oh my God. For two years I've been sitting on that pattern wanting to make it you know, it dropped off my radar, but then Chevy Rell talked about it, and I said, oh my gosh, I have to start this. So after my success with Crochet Luna's Encanto shawl or scarf that I made, I thought I would tackle another pattern, a written pattern. And so here's what I have so far. I'm using sport weight yarns. I really love the pattern and I'm so excited. So I look forward to seeing Chevy Rell's and her completed project, and, well, her progress, and then her completed project. And maybe some of you guys are knitting this one too. So that's been great fun, but I've put it on hold because I would really like to finish my Sorel sweater. Claudia from Crochet Luna and I met at the Altered Stitch for a trunk show of Die Lot Studios. And we picked up, oh my God, it was so much fun there, you guys. The, there were a lot of people there, and I think Diane did really well. Diane is the dyer behind Dye Lot Studios. She was actually recently on Christy Glass, maybe a couple months ago. So I want to share with you some of the goodies that I picked up at the, at the trunk show. First of all, check out this bag, you guys. Let me get up close. There's a little raccoon on here. This is called the raccoon bag. I got, and there's gonna be crinkling, so sorry about that. Well, first, before the crinkle, before the crinkle, before the crinkle, Claudia and I are going to do a project. We are going to make, and this designer Her name is Faye Dashber, Dashber Hughes, and I think she's a UK designer. And all of her patterns, I'm not sure, I, not, not all, but many of her patterns are both, there's a crochet version and a knit version. So Claudia and I, um, in the near future, Claudia is preparing for stitches. And so Claudia and I are going to do um, a little shenanigans where I will knit the same, we're both gonna knit that same shawl she will, Claudia will do the crochet version, I will do the knit version, and then keep you guys posted on our progress. So we are going to use the exact same colorways.
for our projects and see how similar and dissimilar they look from the knit and crochet in the very same colorways. This is the tourmaline, the one that's sort of just burg cranberry. And then the apple season. It does look like apple spice. And then this sort of butternut color. Not butter. This this kind of mustardy color. I'm not mustard. I'm not sure if that's the right. Is Gwyneth. So these are all DK weight yarns. They are very soft, very beautiful. Oh my gosh, they're really not. They're very beautiful. Next in my little bag of goodies, and here's the crinkle, you guys. Okay, then I picked up of this kit, or I guess it could be a fade. I'll show you the colors this way. And lastly, from Dye Lot Studios, I bought this is called this. Uh, the whole kit or collection is called the Color Crush, and there are all those beautiful colors. Now that my little project bag is empty, I will show you. So the inside of the bag, it's very sturdy. The bottom, the bottom is very sturdy, which I love. It doesn't like collapse down onto itself. It's a nice bucket bag. Here is the inside. This can definitely hold a sweater's worth or even, right, I did my shopping and so it held all, all those mini skeins and my, you know, a pattern and the, um, the, the large, the full skeins. So I was able to, and actually I could have put a few more things in here. It is a beautiful, beautiful project bag. So check out Diane at Dye Lot Studios. While Claudia and I were at the Altered Stitch, there was a young gal in there, maybe 10, 8 to 10 years old. She was with her grandmother, and her grandmother knits and crochets. And the daughter wanted to learn to crochet, and she wanted to pick out some yarn. And she didn't want Michael's yarn, she wanted to pick out some really nice yarn. Which, oh my God, starting her at that young age. So grandma was kind enough and she said, okay, great, we'll go and pick out. So the, the girl was so precious. She had picked out maybe 20 skeins and she, not to buy them all, but she was laying them out. She went through the whole shop. She picked out about 20 skeins that were her favorite or the, the ones that caught her eye first. She laid them out and then she would do processing. I really like this, but maybe this one better. And she was doing a process of elimination, just sweet as can be. And so she finally chose, um, I think a Freya yarn or something that had a lot of pinks in it. She loved pinks. And she had commented, I was wearing, not the crochet crown I just showed you, but the kind that you put with the headband where it's just, the flowers are just here. And she had, oh, I really like your crochet crown. Oh, thank you so much, and that's nice. Uh, so Claudia and I, after we um, were at the trunk show, we went across the street for a bite to eat. And this little girl and her grandmother were there, and they were just leaving. And the little girl came up and said, oh, I made you something. So cute. So she made me, she drew her ball of yarn, her Freya yarn. That's her Freya yarn that she purchased. Isn't that so cute? So she made, she made me this little, the world is yours, just imagine. A very sweet, very nice. Oh, and in fact, when she left the yarn store with her grandmother, and she was chatting with everyone in the store, and she said, bye, have a lovely yarn day. I mean, oh my God, it was just, you know, too precious for words. Hello to the little girl. I, because you're a child, I won't use your name. I don't know if it's okay or not, so I think it's probably best that I don't, but I want to say hello to you personally and to your grandmother, and thank you so much for my lovely picture. Porterness Studios will be at Stitches, not vending, although I think she is going to have a trunk show, uh, a little trunk show or sale um, in her hotel, so I'll keep you posted on that as details become available and little bows on I hope they let him into the convention center he needs to go with me he's my little boy my little I can just pack him in my in my purse he fits wishing everyone a happy Valentine's Day uh, and I know some of you have recently lost some loved ones and so it won't be 
the happiest of days for you, but hopefully you have a lot of wonderful, wonderful, warm memories that will carry you through uh, Valentine's Day. So I will see you at Stitches. I will see you guys next time around. Thanks for watching. Bye.